You've been asking for that, and here it is, an OSPF tutorial, Open Shortest Path First, a dynamic protocol which is used extensively all over, and your 48 supports it. So, let's start. The idea of OSPF is quite complicated to understand if you're dealing only with static routing and you're not dealing with large networks. Now, let's try to simplify things. Think of a large network. Now, divide that network into different areas. In each area, you have what is known as internal router or an OSPF router. Now, each router actually supports a link state protocol. That is, they have a full view of the topology. That topology is actually kept, or that tree that is actually kept within OSPF LSDB. That is a database, a database that each router holds and sends that database between each other and to what is known as an ABR. An ABR is an area border router. That router actually has lag or has an interface that is connected to that specific area, but it also has an interface to another area. Now, each LSDB is sent from the internal routers are, is sent to our ABR. Our ABR is connected to other areas. There are actually two types of area. There's the plain area and there's the backbone area. Now, each area has to be connected to the backbone area. The backbone area has an ID, which is always 0, 0, 0, 0. And other areas can have IDs up to 32-bit range. Information that is actually retrieved within that area is sent between different ABR or ASBR. An ASBR is similar to an ABR, but it is also connected to a non-OSPF routing protocol such as RIP or any other dynamic protocol. All right, so to recap. We divide an OSPF area into several areas. Each area has an ID, an ID in the 32-bit range. Each internal router in the area sends what is known as an LSDB through a message which is known as an LSA. There are different types of messages. We will not get into it. Those messages are sent between the routers and are sent to the ABR, which holds one LSDB database that has the full view of the topology of the network itself. Now, LSAs are sent each 30 minutes. It can be configured. Between different ABRs, we sent what is known as an LSA type tree, which is actually a summarize of the network, and that is only done with the ABR itself. Now, when we configure OSPF on our FortiGate, we actually configure our usually our WAN interface to broadcast the OSPF, the LSDB information to other ABRs or ASBRs. Now, we will do so using the command line and we will see the results using the graphical user interface. All right, so let's start. All right, so let's start with the OSPF configuration. So we have a WAN interface. We will use that interface to distribute our, um, our LSDB. And we have connected subnets. We have the finest subnets and we have the office subnet. Our WAN interface is at the 10.0.3.56. Now, if you move to OSPF, by the way, it is not by default enabled. So you will have to use, if you're not, if you haven't used it uh, before, system feature visibility and enable dynamic routing protocols. In OSPF, you will have to set up the router ID. 
and you will have to set up the area ID. Now, this too can be in the range of a 32-bit number, and you will also have to uh, actually create the interface or the network that you wish to distribute along with the interface. We will start by doing so on the command line and everything will be much more clear. So, config router OSPF. Now let's actually set the router ID. And this will be 75. Let's now config the area and let's just add, do it. We will not use, you know what? Let's use the backbone area. Let's assume that it is in the backbone area. All right, next. And the second thing is to actually uh, configure the network, the WEN interface that has all the connected subnets. The connected subnet will be also distributed. So let's edit one and sorry for that. Config network, uh, there it is, edit one. Now we're actually setting the network, the WEN interface, which is at the 10.0.3 dot 56 we also need to actually set the net mask which is 255 255 255 dot zero and let's set the area again which is the backbone area and let's just end it all right so now let's just refresh our page and once we refreshed our page, we can see that we have actually created a router ID. We have created the area, which is the backbone area. Remember, 0, 0, 0, 0 is the backbone area. We have also configured the network that will be actually distributing through the LSAs. And we need to configure the, let's just, um, name it port one that's our interface and we will you can set up a cost that is between zero to sixty five thousand uh, the lowest is the better one but we will not use cost for now now the hello interval is usually 30 seconds so set it up to 30 seconds and the dead interval can be 180 seconds. All right, now let's just apply that. Now, once we uh, apply that, you, can, you will see that you also have advanced options. We will not get into the advanced options, but you can see that all connected subnets will also be redistributed through that message. So let's just distribute the static, uh, routes that we have. We don't have any RIP or BGP routes, so we will only only redistribute our static routes. All right, now let's just move to our routing table and look for the uh, OSPF that is already being configured on our WAN interface. So for that, we'll use the get router info routing table just a uh, routing table um, database and we can see that we have OSPF configured on our WAN interface. Now we want to see our database, we want to see our LSDB. So for that let's just use the get router um, info OSPF database brief. And here we can see that we are actually at the 75 area. And here we can actually see the links in the network itself, which is at the 10.050, 10.060, and 10.070. 
all being distributed using the WAN interface 10.030.